The history of crime detection has produced no greater name than that of Sexton Blake, and now he's got a new book out. This is the Rebellion special about Sexton Blake, which uh, came out uh, earlier in December. So your um, Rebellion, who you may know as the owners of uh, 2000 AD, have been uh, producing kind of monthly comic specials over the past two or three years, which are uh, have reprints and sometimes new material from various old British comics and now it's uh, Sexton Blake's turn. So yeah, before I go on, last time I said I was going to go to uh, the new Mandarake down in Namba but uh, I got some extra work and was also kind of busy with doing stuff at home for my other job so I didn't really get a chance to go. Well actually I did go past it on the day it opened but after it had already closed and I hadn't been there since. Looks impressive though. So anyway, to turn to this book in question. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, Sexton Blake was a super famous British comics character of kind of the first three quarters of the uh, 20th century, but he kind of uh, vanished from the 1970s onwards and was completely forgotten about. And uh, I discovered him in a article in the Judge Dredd magazine in 2004, and uh, pretty swiftly stopped getting the Judge Dredd magazine as uh, this was much better. So anyway, start off with a uh, history of uh, Sexton Blake. So um, yeah, he started out in 1893 and was uh, in pretty much constant publication in some form or another until uh, 1964. And then uh, in 1965 there was kind of a series of paperbacks and then a few odds and ends after that. So this article is kind of a pretty brief overview of uh, Sexton Blake, but. Uh, it's uh, by Mark Hodder, the uh, oracle of all things Blake, but uh, weirdly enough it contains a number of really bizarre errors, like um, uh, they're talking about how Sexton Blake was named, and uh, they said he was going to be named either Frank Blake, but they decided to change it to Sexton Blake instead, it sounded more kind of a uh, upmarket, and, uh, and uh, the original writer Harold Blythe, often writing under the pen name Hal Meredith, as we see here on the first story, uh, was either going to call him Sexton Blake or Gideon Barr, but for some reason in this article they referred to him as Gideon Carr. But uh, yeah, it's actually Gideon Barr with the B, and uh, I should know, I've actually got the uh, publisher's own file volume of the story papers in which Gideon Barr first appeared, so that's uh, pretty much <laughs> conclusive evidence. So yeah, apart from that uh, mistake, which I suspect was made by uh, some anonymous editor at Rebellion, because I uh, yeah, Mark Hodder's the oracle of all things Blake and wouldn't have made such a stupid mistake like that. So yeah, a brief uh, history of uh, Sexton Blake. So jump back. So started in the Halfpenny Marvel. Jumped to the uh, Union Jack. And I did a review of an early issue of this a while ago. And then uh, in 1915 got the Sexton Blake Library and appeared in some other things. This is the, uh, the Penny Popular and uh, the Dreadnought, which is kind of a bit of a weird paper that went really crazy and fanatical at the beginning of World War One. So yeah, uh, continuing on, this is a Union Jack turned into Detective Weekly that wasn't as good. The Sexton Blake Library had a number of changes and relaunches over the years. And uh, yeah, there was a uh, Sexton Blake TV show in the 1960s and uh, the comic Valiant started running a, a Sexton Blake comic strip, but it was a ter completely terrible. It was a redrawn script from a, a story set in the 1960s called uh, Maxwell Hawk the Ghost Hunter, and it was that was basically a rip-off of Scooby-Doo, but without the dog. And uh, yeah, they redrew those stories in the 1930s as uh, Sexton Blake stories, and made a few little changes like turning World War II veterans into World War One veterans and things like that. And uh, yeah, this is um, another ridiculous mistake. They uh, said that uh, Sexton Blake was extensively covered in a section called Blakeyana in a magazine called the Story Collector's Digest, which is <laughs> another ridiculous mistake. As we can see it, it's called the Story Paper Collector's Digest. I <laughs> got a photo of it and they still made the mistake. So yeah, once again, Mark Hodder wouldn't have written that. It was probably some editor at Rebellion thinking he was tidying up mistakes on a, something he obviously knows nothing about. 
So yeah, Blakeyana was taken over by Mark Codder and put on the internet, which is uh, Blakeyana.com. So, uh, extremely extensive Sexton Blake database that will tell you everything you need to know, and has scans of nearly every, you know, cover scans, I shouldn't say, of nearly every issue. And uh, if you get a subscription, you can see uh, full scans of many, many... Yeah, many of the issues of the uh, Union Jack, Six and Blake Library, and uh, everything, so you can read all the stories on there. The subscription, I think, is uh, just a flat £100 per year, but considering that even some of these fairly ordinary issues can be about £10 each on eBay, that's quite a steal. I'll get it myself one day. Anyway, let me get on to the main attraction of this uh, this book is um, this story. So, um, this is from a comic called Tornado, which ran for a short time over 1979 to 1980. And it was going to have a Sexton Blake in it, but at the last minute there was some copyright weirdness, so they changed his name to uh, Victor Drago. But uh, yeah, in this book they reprint the entire serial, but um, they've changed him back to his proper name of Sexton Blake. And uh, yeah, the uh, Sexton Blake formula was uh, Sexton Blake himself, his young assistant Tinker, and uh, his intelligent bloodhound Pedro. But uh, in Victor Drago they changed him to a Victor Drago Spencer and the dog is called Brutus. But um, yeah, they've corrected the name, mostly corrected the names. It sits, I think, up here. One of these pages. Yeah, anyway. I can't find it now, but yeah, <laughs> one of the early panels they um, accidentally left Tinker's name as Spencer, which is his name under Victor Drago. And also Sexton Blake's car was called the uh, Grey Panther, but uh, Victor Drago's car was called the Silver Lady, and uh, yeah, they've accidentally left that name in one instance too. But uh, yeah, um, you could tell that Victor Drago was supposed to be Sexton Blake because his registration number is SB192. And this is actually the original artwork too, left in from the tornado. So yeah, we have the uh, this complete serial from Tornado. There, uh, there were more Victor Drago stories in Tornado, but they were um, they were text stories of illustrations, and they haven't been reprinted in this book, which is a kind of a shame actually. Apparently, they weren't very good, but it'd be nice to have them complete and under their real name. So yeah, at least the uh, the first Victor Drago comic strip and uh, an article about how that comic came about. So uh, they were gonna call the Tornado comic Heroes to begin with, and have like a a Superman type character and like um, other types of uh, traditional heroic characters. So Sexton Blake was gonna be kind of the throwback uh, classical British story paper hero, but uh, yeah, they changed it to Tornado, and the uh, rights issues meant that they had to change the character to Victor Drago at the last minute. Okay, and then we get some uh, a new comic strip, which is uh, made in kind of a uh, very sparse colours. Which uh, it looks this, like the same colouring that was used on the uh, what was called the Golden Age of the uh, Union Jack story paper. But yeah, the uh, the artwork in this comic is kind of weird, especially in these panels. It's like Looks like they've uh, taken various period photos, like this background, this car, and Sexton Blake himself. They've like taken period photos, cut them up in Photoshop, and stuck them together, and then traced over. So yeah, this scene really doesn't fit together, like the backgrounds at one angle and the cars at the other. This is a little better, but still kind of a bit weird. And yes, it's obviously just like a, a period photo that's been inked over with uh, bits tacked on. Like uh, that insect's arm mango I looked at a while ago. Anyway, it's a pretty decent mystery story. It's set in the golden age of Sexton Blake in the 20s and 30s. I'm pretty sure this is from a uh, Union Jack cover too. And uh, yeah, in the golden age of Sexton Blake, they had um, a number of uh, kind of supervillains or master criminals who were kind of like eccentric costumed villains or had some sort of a some sort of gimmick and uh this is 
about a new one they've made up, at least I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a new one they've made up, called uh, the Chess Man, or pa somebody Pargeter, and they, uh, Sexton Blake's uh, fighting him, and then uh, falls off a roof and apparently dies, and uh, they're having Sexton Blake's funeral, and you can probably guess the rest of the story from that. Judge Dredd used that at least three times in his early years. So then uh, an article about how that comic was made, with many more cover scans. This is the uh, Sexton Blake bust that was produced back in the uh, 1920s, so uh, people could uh, introduce their friends to uh, the Union Jack. And uh, after they'd got, uh, I think, eight people to subscribe to the Union Jack, then uh, they get sent this, but it, um, the uh, kind of the main Sexton Blake artist for decades was called Eric Parker, and this was his first ever sculpture, and it came out quite well. But um, it was kind of really cheaply made, so it broke quite easily. So there's not many left now. All right, this is uh, another article by Mark Hodder about the uh, the artists who drew Sexton Blake. So this is a uh, the first ever picture of him from um, issue six of the Halfpenny Marvel. Although actually I've got issue 5 of the Halfpenny Marvel and actually he first appeared on the editor's page in that issue saying next week we've got a new detective story. So uh, yeah, actually the first appearance of Sex and Blake was in uh, issue 5 but the first story was issue 6 and this is the picture and uh, how his appearance developed down the years. We got a... Uh, somebody... Then bolded the artists' names. Arthur Jones, that's it. He was the first to like give Sexton Blake a really defined appearance, which is kind of kind of Sherlock Holmesian, but with a more receding hairline and not as often a hat and a less fancy pipe. So on. Um, yeah, then uh, Eric Parker took over and became the main Sexton Blake artist, and uh, yeah, it's his kind of a defining image. This is a uh, Golden Age Union Jack cover, you can see the same kind of colouring they used in that comic strip. And uh, yeah, uh, after Eric Parker was uh, ushered out, they went in for these kind of pulp characters, I mean a pulp um, pulp style covers on the uh, what was called the New Order, one of the uh, latter ages of Sexton Blake. And uh, yeah, as you've been seeing, this book also has a number of uh, new illustrations by uh, Edouard Grolt, and uh, yeah, if they ever put Sexton Blake in the dictionary, just uh, this is the definition. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they're um, also putting out a number of books of uh, Sexton Blake reprints, and uh, they were coming up with uh, what Sexton Blake's signature would look like for the cover. So they went through like a uh, nineteenth-century style signatures and like more modern, modernised ones, and went for this kind of mixed style at the end. So yeah, these are the the new books you can buy about Sexton Blake, but um. Uh, unfortunately censored to some degree and uh, these are the upcoming covers for the new ones but yeah um, they got new editorials where um, interviews with Sexton Blake and he's talking about how he regrets the Empire and stuff and they've uh, censored parts of the stories too so I uh, can't entirely recommend these but um yeah in uh, today's Britain unfortunately a uh, publisher putting out completely unabridged stories that were once in mainstream news agents not so very long ago could uh, possibly even face legal troubles so yeah they've had to uh, censor the stories and uh, that's just the way things are in that tin pot despotism at the moment oh well never mind that's why I walked away eh? another uh, new illustration I think this is Miss Death who was a uh, one of the sure to lived Sexton Blake villains and uh, some uh, reprints of extremely short Sexton Blake stories, so this is from uh, the Penny Pictorial, which is kind of a uh, general interest magazine that occasionally had fiction stories too, as quite a lot of magazines did back in the day, from 1908, and uh, inevitably they've gone for one with a, uh, a, well, a woman's a detective, inevitably they would go for something like that, and uh, another text reprint case of the seventh key from the Union Jack, but this is only a partial reprint. It's continued in uh, continued in this book, so yeah, you have to buy the uh, buy that book to read the rest of it, or well, probably all of it, as I imagine they're going to reprint the full story, not just a bit of it. 
So yeah, disappointingly fewer text story reprints, but uh, this is actually part of a uh, collection of specials based on comics, so I suppose they were going to go for the uh, Victor Drago reprint, which is a uh, kind of welcome, because uh, the only other way to get it was track down a collection of Tornado. I, uh, I did bid on a uh, complete bound volume of Tornado once on eBay, but uh, someone, someone else got it. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, Sexton Blake special. Pretty uh, recommended, even with those bizarre mistakes in the introductory article. Uh, maybe we'll get a second printing, I don't know.